Duh. Singer-songwriter Billie Eilish has recently talked about her synesthesia and that it actually runs in her family, so it's a big part of their music. Carol Steen is a, a lovely synesthete artist who lives in New York. Synesthesia is a term used to describe a situation where you have an ordinary thing happen that results in an extraordinary experience. For example, a sound, for most people, is just a sound, whereas for an auditory visual synesthete, you might have a sound gives a colour. So I have synesthesia where I see colours and textures for language, so words, sounds, letters, numbers, days of the week. Um, but I also have these colours and textures for smell, for taste, for feelings and emotions, for pain. There are many different types of synesthesia. Perhaps the most common is graphene colour synesthesia, which is the term given when letters, digits, words evoke experiences of colour. It's an innate, so I don't think about it all the time. It's just kind of there in my mind's eye of how I'm processing information, but it's not at the front of my mind. Other forms of synesthesia include auditory visual synesthesia, where sounds give visual experiences, olfactory synesthesia, where when you smell something, there's a particular visual image that goes with every smell. And then there's forms around our sense of touch and the way vision and touch interact, like mirror touch synesthesia, which is a phenomenon where when people see someone being touched, so for instance, seeing me stroke my cheek like this, actually results in a feeling of touch for that person. I grew up all my life with my sister, my twin sister, identical twin sister, and my mum who had this, and, and we never knew it was a thing um, that had a name. We just thought, you know, we used to discuss it amongst each other and thought that my brother and my dad, who didn't or don't have it, were boring or whatever. And then when I was, I was studying radio at university and at Macquarie University, and there was this little um, sound segment on a, a girl who was um, describing her experience um, of a, a note that was being played. And she said, oh, this is silver to me. And I, I said to the class I was in, I said, oh, no way, that sound is yellow. And I remember everyone looking at me like, you're crazy. And then they went on to explain that this, this lady has a, um, a, you know, a condition called synesthesia. And they went on and I was mind blown, absolutely mind blown. And, you know, on the phone to my mom going, oh my God, mom, what we have isn't normal. <laughs> so yeah, got super interested in it after that. There is a genetic link to synesthesia in the sense that it's, it tends to run in families and it seems to be more prevalent amongst women than amongst men. I have a two and a half year old as well and, and she's certainly been showing some signs. I'm not sure if it's just toddlerness, but she sort of says, oh, Monday's pink. And I sort of thought, okay, all right, maybe she could have it. It's certainly hereditary, so. There's some work going on around the genetics. In terms of whether we're all born with synesthesia, there, are, there is a hypothesis that suggests that it results from a lack of pruning of the neuronal connections that uh, we have when so when we're born our brain has lots and lots of connections and then through experience it, the, the brain kind of prunes off the ones that aren't needed and that then uh, we, we develop our cognition through that and one hypothesis is that maybe synesthetes don't have like don't lose connections that the rest of us lose.